recently I've been seeing some videos online where people have been complaining about the complexity of a Floyd Rose bridge system on a guitar. Some of you may be familiar with this if you've ever seen an Eddie Van Halen playing live or in a video. Most of his guitars are equipped with that, as are Steve Vai, Joe Satriani. They all use Floyd Rose style equipped bridges. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what is a Floyd Rose bridge, what are some of the differences in working with that, and why it's not necessarily as complicated as people think. All right, so here I've got my trusty Kramer guitar. This is from like 86, maybe. Uh, and this has a Floyd Rose system on it. So what are the differences? Well, with a Floyd Rose system, you actually have locks across the nut here. And I've got a close-up photo that you'll be able to see how we actually clamp down on the strings. This can get a little bit confusing because when you first set up the guitar and get it in tune, you'll clamp this down and then you have to retune it. And you might ask, well, how do you tune it if the strings are prevented from moving across the nut? And usually these guitars have some kind of fine tuners on them. And the very first generation did not have this. So tuning instability was kind of an issue. But this guitar has been sitting for a month and it has not been tuned in that month. And it's still fairly in tune. The thing is, you have to get the strings stretched when you first put them on. So yeah, if you have a new set of strings and you don't kind of stretch them as you go, uh, when you first put them on, it, it will tend to go flat as the strings kind of get broken in. So there's a few things that you can do to improve the tuning stability. First of all, as you put the strings on, you'll want to stretch them in some way. There's different devices you can get. You can use your fingers, you can tune. And unlike a lot of guitars, I can do uh, a lot of vibrato bends with it and not worry about it going out of tune. I can make the strings completely slack and it will still come back in tune. Try that again. So I can use a lot of vibrato and it will still stay in tune. I can even take the strings completely slack and I can bring it back up. So when you first change the strings on this, uh, if you change string gauges, meaning that you go to a thinner or, or a heavier string, you will get uh, adjustments that have to be done in the bridge. So essentially you will get the strings up to pitch, adjust the bridge a little bit until you get um, get it back where you want it to be as far as, as how far forward or backwards it is. And you kind of have to go back and forth. So when you first get it set up, if you change string gauges, it's a little bit of extra work to get it to set properly. But once you have it done, if you always use the same string gauges, there's no problem with it. The other major complaint is that if you break a string, it will go out of tune. And that's true because it's a balanced tension between the springs in the back of the guitar and the string tension itself. Now, the way to get around this is that when you change strings, you'll want to make sure that you've deburred the saddles. That's what I typically do. I take a really fine file and lightly deburr the saddles and it removes any kind of sharp points that could potentially break the strings. Also, if you bend it and have it set up so that you can bend really high with it, know that that's a chance that you'll actually break a string because you're dramatically increasing the tension and you're also rolling over the point of contact on the bridge itself. So, by following some of the, those techniques, you can get this to where it's a really stable system and you won't necessarily have to worry about it. There are a few tricks that you can do to modify the guitar so that it will prevent you from uh, having issues should you break a string. Now you can get a locking system so that you can lock the bridge in place, meaning it's not going to move once you have it set. Then if you break a string, it's not that big of a deal. What Eddie Van Halen uses 
So what he does is actually have a device that blocks the tremolo, meaning that he can bend the vibrato in downward direction, but not pull it up upward. And what that does is that if, it, if a string breaks, the springs can't pull the bridge back towards the body, which means that the pitch will stay the same. This is also how he uses a drop D tuna, as it's called. It's basically a device that goes on the E string and he can flip it and it will drop the guitar down to drop D tuning. If you were to do that without having the bridge locked, it's going to change the tension or the equilibrium of the tension between the strings and the springs in the back of the guitar and it's going to change the overall tuning. So once you have it set up, it will maintain its tune very well. So here, I know it's not going to be perfect. So I go through and I use the fine tuners to adjust the pitch. But it is very close, especially for having sat for so long. And when you have the guitar set up properly, there's all kinds of different tricks that you can do. So different things that you can do with the sound with the guitar with this type of, of vibrato. of really weird sounds with it and different effects so some people like to do things like that there's a million tricks if you've ever seen uh, Tom Morello with uh, plays with Rage Against the Machine Audio Slave and a few other bands he's well known for his use of vibrato to get all kinds of just really bizarre sounds but you can be very creative with it. So that's my take on the Floyd Rose system. Again, don't necessarily steer away from a guitar that has it. Uh, you just have to know how to work with all of its little idiosyncrasies. If you enjoy this video, click the subscribe button and give it a like. If you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when I post new content. And until next time, keep practicing.